We've got a few slides today talking about some insights around generations. It's one of the biggest questions that my team always gets at Moa Brown is these millennial people. Yeah. How do we connect with them? Because no one watches TV. How, how many of us believe that millennials don't watch TV? Ah, okay. And it's all about celebrities. That's the other thing I get. So as long as we have some great branded content, and some celebs and great social media in our plans for millennials, we're gonna rock it. That's pretty much what it comes down to. However, today I'm hopefully going to be dispelling some myths for you around how to market across generations. So, we've got three key things. We're gonna look at the right audience, because it is actually about getting to a chance to speak to the right people, as well as the right time and the right message. So, the right audience. This is hot off the press from South Africa. Another thing that, or another question or an insight that I often get is to say, ah, oh, digital is die, or, or traditional is dead. It's all about digital. Everyone is spending all their time on digital. No one pays attention to traditional channels anymore. And this magnificent, completely blurry slide over here shows you that in South Africa, the share of eyeballs or the share of attention between digital digital channels and traditional channels is 50-50. Who would have thought, right? Which is not at all the case for global. So global is big, big, big on digital. So when we're sitting in boardrooms and we're talking about this amazing US strategy, or this is what our global brand from Europe did, or this is what the Australian guys are doing, we are not comparing apples with apples because global differs completely to South Africa. Traditional is still very, very strong here. The other thing that we also get is that traditional does compete with digital across the board. This is a chart that shows you the amount of time that different generations are spending on media. Over here, we have mobile across different generations. So Teenagers, 16 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to four, or, or 35 to 49. And you can see how important mobile is. Yes, we are spending lots of time on our mobile phones. This is not a surprise. Everybody knows this. We are also spending an enormous amount of TV time. And we also have the opportunity to be reached through out of home and radio. So when we're looking at media plans and actually marketing to different generations, it is not that vastly different in terms of how we would reach one generation or the other. It's all pretty much the same. The other thing is we get a lot of questions around tuning out. Ah, oh, TV, no one watches live TV anymore. Everyone's streaming, everyone's Netflixing, showmaxing, or PVRing, you know, TV is a bit dead. And yes, the content in South Africa is a little bit questionable, not amazing content. So this is the other generalization that we get about TV. However, when we look at South Africa, we can see, yes, there are a lot of things happening within the TV or video stratosphere, but 60% of time is still spent on live broadcast TV, not time-shifted viewing. These are people sitting in front of the telly and watching live TV. YouTube comes up. Netflix still quite small. And then there is this big green bar over here, which says social video or coincidental. That is because when I'm sitting watching TV and I tune out of the TV ads and I'm on Facebook, I'm watching Facebook ads, right? So although there is a huge opportunity for digital, and there is, the second part or the couple of slides that I'm gonna to talk to you about is how we actually overcome the gap of reaching people. And we know TV has great reach. Digital also has great reach, but it's about how we engage with them. Just because everyone we know has a mobile phone doesn't mean that everyone wants to see your ad. 
And this is where we get to the combination of that TV and online video. When we start looking at generations, there is an age bias when it comes to tuning out. It is a lot more prevalent that youngsters are accepting looking at and surfing digital video compared to traditional TV. However, there is still a huge amount of time being spent on that traditional channel. So the sweet spot there is to make sure that the content that we're placing in both traditional and digital actually um, resonates really, really well with the key audience that we're trying to connect with. The right time. <laughs> All ads. Uh, I don't know where everyone here is from, but I can guarantee you that all ads are annoying. No one likes advertising. No matter how brilliant you think your ad in the boardroom is and how much your friends like the ad that you have created, all ads are annoying. I think the thing is, is that there are some ads that are exceptional and some ads that consumers are really willing to look at, engage with and watch. However, the channel does play a huge role because over here on this side for the traditional team and over here on this side for the digital team, this chart showcases how people feel about advertising in different channels. So am I more accepting of advertising in out of home TV, radio, cinema, or digital? <laughs> that does not paint a pretty picture. It means that consumers are just used to advertising within a traditional space. It's not that annoying. It's still annoying, but not as annoying as seeing ads in a digital personalized space. The biggest trend or the biggest growth in South Africa, digital video. Digital video performs worse than direct email in terms of consumers' favorability to advertising in those platforms. What this chart doesn't tell you is this chart doesn't say that, oh, all digital advertising is terrible. This chart just says to you that there is a huge job to be done within the digital space. We need to make sure that the ads that we're putting out in a digital world are relevant, are engaging, that our content is amazing because consumers are less forgiving of poor ads in digital than they are of really poor ads in the traditional space. The worst TV ad will perform better than probably some of the best creatives within digital, simply because consumers have a far higher um, irritation factor when it comes to traditional advertising. Within digital, and we know there's tons and tons of different digital formats, Within the digital space, everything that gives consumers a way to control what they are seeing is more favored than anything that you are forcing me to watch. So non-skip, <laughs> excuse me, non-skip pre-roll, which hopefully um, no one is forcing on the poor minds of South Africans, um, really, really hated hated by consumers across generations. Anything that gives me a reward, so mobile app reward video, um, very favored. Yes, you're forcing me to watch something, but at least I get something in return. So that um, performs really well. And anything that has a skip to it. It still doesn't mean, though, that any of these formats can't work or don't work. It just means that within a digital space, we already have two hurdles to overcome. We have the hurdle factor of irritability, and we have the hurdle factor of your forcing me to watch something. So it means that when we are thinking about different formats across the generations when it comes to video, we really need to make sure that our content is amazing. Need to 
um, have creatives that tell stories, that really work at building resonance for your brands. Because without that, without great content, without great creative, these formats are going to really, really struggle to drive any affiliation for your brand. Ah, and the right message. Apart from just, I guess, traditional ads, and I've shown you some of that, there are a lot of other avenues that can be explored because some of these in South Africa, consumers don't necessarily see as advertising. Now, depending on who you are and where you're from, um, you might look at these charts and go, wow, how, how silly can people be, right? However, there are forms of, of advertising that are very, very well received across generations. Things like tutorials, shopping content, reviews, events, branded events, consumers love that, don't necessarily see it in the same realm as a good old TV or radio ad. Um, Brand information, we start trending a bit down, so if it's, it's really brandy, I'm not sure. It doesn't mean that it can't work, it does, but there are so many other forms of advertising which consumers are actually very, very receptive to. And then we get down to user reviews, native articles, social feed, and celebrity content. So celebrity content doing really, really well in the younger generations. Um, anyone probably over the age of 22, um, the lowest form of impact that, that um, celebrity content does have available. So if you're thinking of using celebrities or influencers, um, any kind of celebrity content within social media, we see that anyone probably over the age of 25 doesn't resonate um, that strongly. So it certainly is a way to target um, younger consumers. The, the Gen Zs, the 16 to 19 year olds, we've seen amazing um, return on investment from brands who have actually invested in celebs within those younger generations. That is the one thing that probably is quite different between marketing through the generations. And then the last um, two slides that I have for you is really, regardless of what channel we use, I think the superpower of whatever channel is really based on the content in that channel. You can have the most amazing media plan that reaches 80% of your target audience. You can have the most phenomenal digital plan. But if your content does not resonate, it doesn't matter how much money you invest from a media point of view. If that content is poor and the content doesn't work for your brand, that is every single media cent wasted. Here is a beautiful illustration of digital video ads. So these are digital video ads that have tested phenomenally well. They are amazing pieces of content. If you look on the Moa Brown um, database, you will see that this has been validated with the 2016 Can Lion winners, right? So these are amazing pieces of creative. Even then, Consumers don't really like watching anything for longer than 10 seconds. It doesn't mean that you can't get consumers to watch a long um, piece of film if you have a way to target them to actually engage with that. But in terms of traditional video advertising on social or YouTube, you really have to work very hard, even if your content is amazing, to get past the 20 second mark. After that, there is a huge drop off in terms of views. So, what do we see carries you through? What is the thing in content that makes you overcome the skip, that makes consumers watch more of your ad? There are really three things, and you can distill them into two. The one is, be funny. 
We like sharing content that is funny. So if there is a sense of humor in the story, we know that the view through race is likely to be longer. The other two buckets is be the thing I am interested in, the category or the brand that I am interested in. And this ties very, very closely to telling a good story. So if you can't be super funny, then tell a good brand story. Things that are sticky, stories that are sticky, that resonate with consumers, that human truth, that is the thing that is going to make your ad a success and actually drive that view through race. And then as we go down, we get a few what I like to call supporting factors. Good music, good characters, something intriguing happens, it's a very pretty ad, but ultimately the content is really determined by those two factors. It's funny or it has a real human truth. It is something that I'm really, really interested in. And those are the things that will drive any great campaign, no matter where you are, no matter what you're targeting through the generations, it really comes down to this last slide, which is your creative. And I think when we look at all the data that we have, so not only from all the millions of studies we've done, but other studies available in South Africa, you can look at reach and you can look at frequency and you can look at millions and millions of impressions and you can pat yourself on the back and go, wow, that's an amazing media plan and it's really cost effective. But regardless of what you're spending, or if your creative content doesn't work for your brand, if it isn't engaging, if it doesn't cut through in terms of the name of the brand, if it doesn't communicate on, on message, then it is actually a wasted opportunity. And I know that Today we're presenting to you, so somewhere else in the other section, uh, we're talking about best liked ads. And then later this afternoon, we're actually also presenting best liked ads. And the best liked ads, TV ads in South Africa, over the last 35 years, have the same things in common. The things that worked in terms of creative stickiness in 1984, are the same things that work now for creative stickiness in 2017. The, whilst the industry has changed and how we reach people has changed and we can plan and plan and plan, and please, I'm not saying don't have an amazing plan, but we do really need to think about that content, what we're putting out there. And that's how we're going to win regardless of whatever generation we're targeting.